comfy. Dude, your chair, your chair is comfy. It is comfy. <laughs> how's how's my chair? It's good. I like I like the reclining. Look how thick those armrests are. I swear, dude. My grandpa, my grandpa that sent me that fish thing, mm -hmm. he just tuned in. Hmm? I'll, I'll bring it like next time. It'll be on the wall somewhere. But my grandpa sent me something to go on the wall. Oh, nice. We still got Higdon, right? Mm -hmm. We're still at Higdon right now, right? Yep. <clears throat> oh, here we go, right? Right after this. Put my show notes on that phone that I wanted to do. What? My show notes are on that phone. Here we go. Higdon. It's the six o'clock hour, and Back to the Lodge is live from Icy Tech Studios here in Huntington, Tennessee. I'm Patrick. No, I'm Matt. I'm Nick. And it's hunting season. Thank God. It is. <laughs> Finally. Oh. And it is getting into full. Uh, gun season starting Saturday. Yep. So, got out and did a little archer hunting this weekend. Put one in the freezer. First time I ever hunted from the ground for bow season. Can you elaborate or is that just where the story stories are? I mean, it could just end there, but <laughs> it was. I, look, okay, so I've never bow hunted from the ground. I've always been in a, a stand. What we call a stand up north is a true ladder stand, right? Or a yep. climber. Yep. And, um, this time, this year, I put my ghillie suit on, mm. and I've got a really nice ghillie suit. We were hunting the edge of a cornfield, so I took some of the corn stalks and stuffed it in the back and put some leaves on, and I nestled down on the tree line. Uh, old Will said, yeah, there'll be plenty of deer up in this area. God, I wish that I could post pictures right now. I know. Like, like in the sorry. comments, because I got a picture of easily sitting behind you mm -hmm. and him sending you a picture saying, hey, <laughs> Can you find that? <laughs> <laughs> what he didn't know was it was a live photo, so if I just hold on it, it it's live for a second, so it's like a little mini uh, video. I didn't know that's how that worked. And yeah, I'll show it to you. Oh, this could be very educational. Okay. But anyways, I had while he's pulling it up, I had a good ghillie suit, and um, right off the bat, there was a six point that came in and just would not leave us alone. He said, "Bet you can't find that." Can you see up in that top corner? There's that that little circle. Yeah. If you hold it. So it was fairly easy to find you because I knew it was a live photo. <laughs> but I will say, you did. You looked like a deadfall. Yeah, I mean, and, and I also, in all fairness, had my face screen pulled up so you could see my face. Right? I don't know if I wasn't that video. No, I couldn't, though. But, um, so yeah, the, you know, six point came in. There was there was five, six doe that came in after that. Anyways, put, a, put one in the freezer. Nothing worth mentioning, but... Uh, meat in the freezer, and that's that's what counts, and we are able to come back and process it. And we've got our own little processing area set up down there. I saw. So we, we just <laughs> hoist it right up. We go get to butchering, and, and Will's got a nice uh, uh, grinder. So yeah. we were able to just, man, we, we got every inch of meat off that deer. Um, which, surprisingly enough, Matt, because I've always taken mine somewhere. So... When I got that process, and I'm like, "Wow, that's a lot of meat." <laughs> oh yeah, it's you a lot get of meat. so much more yeah. when you do it yourself, because those, you know, if you take it to a processor, nothing against processors, but they have so many deer to clean, they can't realistically get every cubic inch of meat mm -hmm. off the bone. So you do have quite a bit of loss, um, but you're going to spend an extra, you know, it's time value, right? So you're going to spend an extra two hours, right, picking at that to get an extra five pounds. Yeah, but. Hey, it's five pounds. It's five more pounds. That's a lot of burgers. Well, what I found interesting is you didn't cut it. I cut all of my ground, all of my venison ground. Mm -hmm. I cut it pork fat, always. 20%, yeah. I always do, but you didn't. All right. And and why you didn't makes sense to me, but I still think I cut it. Well, here's here's a couple reasons. Number one is, do we not anticipate getting a lot of 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you cut it, <laughs> that's just more freezer space. Right. So if you don't cut it, and then your, your recipe changes, say you, say you just want it straight, then it's straight. And then if you want to cut it with, because um, I use pork sausage, I think you do too. But I know people use beef fat. And look, to each their own, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I'm going to consolidate the space and then mix it as I need it. Uh, you know, just... It works out. I'm, all, I'm always pork fat, only because it brings that sweetness. Oh, I, that I, pork fat's got that sweet. I even like taking just plain old Italian sausage sure. and putting that in there too, and, and that kind of livens it up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, oh shoot, we have a whole bunch of comments on here. Richard Kaufman, how's it going? Brad Wilson, Megan Cruz Miller, George. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. There's Justin, our producer from Knucklehead Media. Somebody sent me some deer sausage sticks, Justin. Um, we will get on that when we start smoking the meat, yeah. which will probably not be for at least another week or two. Because um, right now we're going to fill the freezer and then get into Thanksgiving. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hook you up. Matt Roberts is tuned in. Francesca. Oh, that must be Justin's wife. That's what I guess. There's not many people with the same last name on Zerlitic. Yeah, so. <laughs> so we'll take it. Um, but hey, just so everybody knows, Facebook has actually changed. Um, how you share content and, and for content creators, we can't put on there to like and share our posts anymore. That, that actually was a policy change in August. We didn't know about it. We found out about it. So yeah. please don't like and share wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but if you listen to this, uh, Justin's been super great at, uh, at getting some of the platforms tweaked out. And now that we're video podcasts, you can actually watch the full video mm -hmm. on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I don't know why anybody would want to watch the video. I don't want to look in the mirror for 10 minutes, let alone watch myself talk. Hey, speak for yourself. Well, we don't want to all get blessed with your looks. <laughs> <man. laughs> we can't all just wake up and look like Luke Bryan in the morning. What was that face? <laughs> look like he had a fart. Man. I didn't think I looked like Luke Bryan. <laughs> <laughs> You definitely have that country singer, new kid look. New kid. On the block. Did, so does Luke Bryan look like the new kid? Sort of. I mean, we can start to say Luke looks like Nick on a stick. Uh, Nick's still up there. Nick on a stick is still up there. Oh. And, and he will be. Um, <laughs> <coughs> this is getting out of control already. But uh, no, Justin's got us linked up now on YouTube so you can watch the playback. Um, but if you're if you're listening to this podcast on Apple, I think Apple Tunes is the only one that allows you to leave the reviews. Um, hey, we appreciate the reviews. I checked it the other day. Uh, I think I talked about this last week, and I saw a hundred five star reviews, and I'm like, man, wow, that's awesome. Uh, I mean, it was so humbling. On the other hand, I'm going, what in the hell did we do to get five star reviews? Because I didn't think it was that, you know, exciting, but well, apparently it was. Might be my good looks. We just got video. Man. Yeah, 100 even. <laughs> we just got video. Hmm. One. Look, that's 101. I already got uh, it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I didn't. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yeah. You just boosted my that's, from a one star to a five star. That's why you wanted to. That's why you wanted to make an iPhone. <laughs> But no, you know what? I was thinking about this, and everybody likes to do their own thing when they're hunting. Some people like to, you know, text home or play games. I'm sure you probably play pool on your thumb while you're in a stand. Whoopie? Probably. <laughs> and I had my phone out because, you know, Will was telling me, you know, what to watch for and this and that, but I, I don't enjoy that. Me personally, I, I like having the phone away. I don't mind taking a picture or a video, um, but it was so good to be actually out in the woods in such a long time, uh, and we talk about all the time on the shows that mental health aspect of it, and to, to, I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> that microphone is so good, it picked up you putting the coat on that. <laughs> but, um, you know, to, to get the full effect of being in the woods and being able to just kind of let go, and... Uh, I, I would, even though we were only out there for an evening hunt, because we were going to go out for the whole weekend and just fill that freezer, but we only got a couple hours in the field due to things that happened. Um, 
but man, it, it was so humbling and rejuvenating to get back out there and just, dude, I was lean prone on the ground. I mean, just laying on my belly. And uh, that's when I realized, like, you know, everything going on in this country and, and social media and, and people like to say fake news and fake this and fake, it, a lot of it really is. It, it's all what they want you to believe. And I was scrolling through Facebook today, and uh, we were getting some content put together for the show. And somebody had posted something, I was reading it, and it just, for whatever reason, caught my attention. And they talked about, there's so many people that want to portray that they're an influencer, a motivator, a, a somebody, you know. And, and that's great in its own respect, but who is really leading people and, and I mean leading not telling but showing people and leading them to another option so it's so easy for someone to say that is wrong or that is wrong I disagree with that I disagree with that and, and you see it when you if anybody follows like news pages mm. okay everybody knows it's no secret Fox is considered the, the conservative news. CNN is considered the progressive or liberal news. And then you'll have somebody go to one of those news sites and just say, you're all wrong. You're all idiots. You're all wrong. Well, you're the one that went to the opposite side of your beliefs to dictate to others you're wrong. So you're just as stupid as whatever else you were trying to make your point. So the point you were making to me now, I'm looking at going, that person's an idiot. Now I've known this, this is no secret. But, you know, there, there's there's nobody leading to that solution. And Matt knows, if, if people come to me with, and they say, look, here's, here's the problem, this is a problem. I want two or three suggestions on what to do about it. And there's nobody giving suggestions. So here's Patrick's suggestion of the day. If you get a chance to go out hunting or fishing, and I are guilty of this for a different reason. Nope. Turn the phone off. <laughs> unless you need it for emergency. Now, Matt and I went fishing once when there was no self service. Yeah. We didn't quite realize it. We just thought it was really fortunate that our phones didn't ring that day. We were in so much trouble. So much trouble. <laughs> I've never been in, I was like a child being scorned. You, you more than me. I mean, I, I wasn't not in trouble. I was definitely <laughs> in some trouble. But, uh, but no, but I mean, look, to get outdoors and shut that phone off, not just because of the social media, but because you're looking at the, you're looking at this little thing instead of taking in the entire outdoors and what it has to offer. And just that little bit of time was a huge mental reset. Oh yeah. It, it's it's surreal. So if you get a chance to get out there, I encourage you, you know, have your phone on you, always be safe, be mindful, but just put it down. And it's, it's amazing how much clarity comes oh, yeah. after that. Because I actually talked to you Sunday morning. I was so stressed out. By the time I got back Sunday night, I felt like I slept 10 days in a row. What time did you get back Sunday night? Like from hunting or home? Home. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Hold so, on. Before we jump through that, <laughs> I'm not in much trouble anymore about that evening. Because where we went camping, I'll get into that later, was one lake over. From okay. our little spot. We won't say that spot. Right. And, <laughs> you know, the goal of the weekend was everybody wasn't going to be on their phones. But as soon as we got there, I said, hey, babe, where are you, where are you phone? She looked at it. I said, see why I wasn't responding? No service. <laughs> no service. Exactly. But what time did you get home? I got home about 4.30 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so it's a long, long, we'll, we'll condense it like you do with the audio. We'll condense the story. Okay. Um, so, I ate a little too much cake during COVID, and it started after I got my deer, and it just it, it made it to the tree line and, and dropped. So that was the nice part is that we didn't have to track the deer, mm -hmm. and a good shot. But 
you have the drag belt. 12 yards away, you could have thrown a spear. <laughs> like, I, I, it's not like you made some 62 yard shot. No, it was, it was literally like, it was probably a 15 yard shot. Yeah. I mean, it was, I couldn't ask. <laughs> Look, if it could have came up and kissed me, it would have. But anyways, so we got to drag the deer out. Oh dear God, my age, I'm feeling it. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm proud. I got a dad bod and I got the, the belly and the ectomorphic shape. But holy hell, man. <laughs> Dragging out that Tennessee deer, which is way smaller than Ohio deer. Oh, I was hurt. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And I looked at Will and I'm like, hey, man, you, uh, you want to grab one leg and I'll grab the other? He's like, yeah, bud, I got you. Thank you, Jesus. Like, what a friend, you know? <laughs> so he grabs one. You know what's even better for him? I got the side by side lined up for the weekend. So yeah, but you were tied up last week. <laughs> no, so I have it this weekend. Uh, we're dra- and I'm, we're looking forward to that. So <laughs> we're dragging this deer out, and we make it maybe another fifty to hundred yards. We are easily, easily a mile in, maybe a half mile to a mile. And Will looked at me. He's like, "Okay, dude, I can't even do this." Will's a little fluffier than me. <laughs> Shorter, you know, less of a stride. But the corn had just been cut. So you had to high step it over mm-hmm. each row, too. All right. All mind you, we are we have a Ducks Unlimited event to support that night, and we have to get Icy Tech coolers to the convention center by 9 p.m. Okay, it's only five. So uh, we got okay, okay. we got four hours. We're good. Yeah. So <laughs> we get the deer, I don't know, I want to say probably seven, eight hundred yards. From the field we were hunting in, and we were just like, dude, this sucks. We can't, we can't do this anymore. So Will's wife was with us. It was the three of us hunting, and she's like, "Well, I'll just stand here with the deer. Um, we'll get it to where we can at least get to somewhere accessible with a truck, and then pick it up." So we're like, "Okay, I'll go with Will. She's good with the deer. We head out." Now she's she's got her handgun. She's she's good to go, so she's safe, and she's got a flashlight and a phone. So we started high stepping it back to the truck. Now we're already exhausted because we've been dragging this deer mm. and dragging it through corn that's still foot and a half tall, the stalks in the road. And there's culverts. So we're jumping the culverts. It's muddy. It's car- it's it's everything a hunt should be. It really is. Right. But by the time we got to the truck, both of us are sitting there like <gasps> <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That part wasn't enjoyable. So anyway, we get the deer. Then we come back to the shop. We get it hung up. And they're hungry. And I'm now covered in blood. So I'm like, well, we got to get these coolers fixed up so we can head up to the convention center. Mm-hmm. So I run home to change. Will takes his family to dinner. Circle back. And we're loading these coolers into Will's truck. Well, the problem was there's still blood in the back of Will's truck. And it's too cold to sit there and rinse the bed out. So I literally put a sheet of cardboard down on the flat of the truck, the flat of the bed, and then we loaded them. And then we go to the convention center to drop off the coolers. So now it's, I think we got there at 8.45. Mm-hmm. So we get, of course, they needed a little couple hands. We help them out. And, you know, guys, anybody who's part of DU, um, we all like to talk and tell our hunting stories. And I didn't want to talk or tell my story. But other people did, and I respect these people, so I want to hear what they had to say. So we didn't actually get out of there to probably 9.30, 9.45. Then we come back here and start cutting up this deer. And we spent a good few hours working on it because we wanted to get every bit we wanted. Right. So now, when I say a few hours, that's three hours of actually cutting, processing, grinding, packing, wrapping, vacuum sealing. And then another two, three hours of me and Will screwing off and, you know, Having a coke and a joke, and just, <laughs> it just kept coming. So by the time we got everything done, it's like two, and then we spent about an hour and a half washing everything, cleaning everything down, rinsing this, rinsing that, dumping this, dumping that, bagging this, and it's three thirty. Mm. Well, Will jumps in his truck and heads off. I jump. Okay, so those that don't know, I have no truck right now. Um, the engine thermostat decided not to like me, and if you happen to be a 2016 Chevy Colorado owner. I highly recommend that you don't try to do the thermostat yourself <laughs> because it's behind the wheel well on the back of the block. Unless you're an ASG certified mechanic. Yeah, and you've done <laughs> this like a few hundred right. times. 
Um, it's a real pain in the butt to get to. Um, so I'm driving a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, it's a very good friend of mine's in the, in the interim. But it doesn't have the doors and the roof on it. No, I could stop what I'm doing, change my schedule, and go put all this on there. But I really thought, you know what, I'm not going to drive it much. And I have it. Uh, I'll just drive it during the day. Well, then things like coming back from hunting. This show, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of night driving. Well, all of a sudden, now nights are like 35 degrees outside. I can be a tough guy. I can, I can get in that Jeep or motorcycle and ride in freezing temperatures and just be manly and shut up. Dude, I'm at the age, I don't care. It's cold. I don't want to drive it at night. And it is what it is. Mm. So it's not that I'm bitching about it. But look, if I have options, I'll take it other options. Well, I left it off. And I don't know, it got down like 33 or something. The windshield had a layer of frost and ice on it. Well, when you turn your defrost on, that works really good when the vehicle's enclosed, but when it's wide open, it took an hour to defrost the windshield. So I went oh. and got home about 4.30 in the morning, went to bed, passed out, and had to be up at 7. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, before I, before it starts to sound like wham wham. How was your weekend, man? Oh, mine was great. I know. I had none of those issues. <laughs> No, we went out camping uh, because I said earlier that it's close to where we fish. I'm not going to say where I went camping. Nope. Nope. But, but we got something called a tent cabin. I mean, you could say which park it nope. was. Oh, wow. There's only five lakes on that park. I'm not even going to bring it down to that. Doesn't the park go like all the way to Texas, though? No. Sort of. No. Not really. Like, if I said the name of the park. Well, then I guess we better stop there because I probably just said too much. So, um, we got what's called a tent cabin, which the woman told my wife over the phone, understand it's very primitive. Like, I don't care, it's what we're looking for. Mm. Whew. Primitive. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. It ended up being exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But we show up, and it's five little cabins next to each other, little A-frame, tiny, probably 12 by 12 cabins. And there's two bunk beds, which are twins. So we all slept in our own bed, which is fine. And... The mattresses are worse than prison mattresses. Matter of fact, probably where they get them from. I mean, you know this, huh? I'm a friend. <laughs> and what we didn't know is, it says air conditioning. I assumed what they meant by that was hot or cold. No. No, if there's an air conditioning no. unit in the window, no heat. <laughs> no stove or anything? Nothing. <laughs> you walk in the front door, this is concrete floor, two very old metal bunk beds, there's not a table, no chairs, dresser, nothing in there. Sure. It is as basic as it gets. Matter of fact, when it got light out and we were still inside, you can actually see through gaps in the, like, it's not insulated. That's what you need with a uh, hot coal pan. Like, simple, simple. Mm -hmm. Now, it is close enough to the house. There's no bedding, which sure. we, we brought, like, some comforters. But we didn't have sheets or any of that. So I, I looked at the girls. I said, you know what? It's early enough. Let's run home quick. It only take us a few hours. Let's go get a little heater. Let's go get some, you know, some sheets. So we ran home. We got that. I ended up being great. The cabin was awesome. No running water. No, we had to walk to the you know, bathhouse and the campground. Um, my big, big, big takeaway. Number one, no cell service, which that didn't really matter because we made a pact that there was no electronics the entire weekend anyway. We took our watches off. I couldn't have told you what time it was. I, I mean, we had nothing. But what I loved the most was being in that campground puts you back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Kids are riding around on bikes. Mm -hmm. You walk from camper to camper saying hi to people, drinking a beer, everybody sitting around the campfire. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. And for the two days that we were there, two and a half days we were there, it was, I mean, there was nothing. There was nothing to... There was nothing to complain about. There was nothing. Did you have to take your own wood? Uh, we did. Um, you could have bought it, but it's not so why. Where so, you live? Yeah. So <laughs> we brought our own wood. Um, the storm came up Saturday night. Got real, real windy. Oh yeah, the wind was bad Saturday. I forgot about that. So we had to cut our fire a little short. It was just blowing too hard. I didn't feel good about all the dry leaves. And with leaves all the leaves and, on the ground, I just didn't feel good about it. So we cut that short and just ended up hanging out inside the inside the cabin. Um, 
saw a couple board games. Saturday during the day, we took a hike down one of the nature trails that every uh, quarter mile, there's a post with a piece of paper that, that tells you about a tree that you're looking at. It tells you about the creek that you're looking at. Just, mm -hmm. you know, information. We took about a four mile excursion through the woods, packed a snack, packed or packed our lunch and drinks. And no, man, it was great. It was exactly what we wanted that weekend to be. Uh, now, apparently, I'm buying a camper. Huh. Oh, I mean, it won't, it won't be <coughs> right now, but right, right. it is, after seeing how much my daughter enjoyed it, how much my wife enjoyed it, and heck, how much I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. um, we're going to get a camper. It's going to happen. Nice. Like, full behind? Yeah. Yeah, nice. I, was, I was really, really, really dead set on getting a bumper full, but after talking to a lot of our neighbors right next to us from the cabin have a camper, mm -hmm. and talk to them on and off all weekend, <laughs> They've been camping, they've been campering for like 25 <laughs> years now. They've owned wow. 15 different campers. They told me all the pros and cons and this and that. And honestly, I really think if I have any vision of dragging it out west or, you know, if we want to go on a hunting trip or something out west, yeah. we want to drag it with fifth wheels the only way to go. Well, so, I don't require a bigger truck. No, no, not necessarily. What, your truck? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, my truck will do it. And you can get those removable fifth wheel hitches and stuff. Because so, I, the reason I didn't want the fifth wheel is because I didn't want that big fifth wheel hitch sitting in my bed when I wasn't pulling something. Sure. But they make those removable ones. Um, you buy four hundred dollars, and that's that's the angle I'm looking for. It, it, it's probably a probably a fifth wheel pull, thirty ish foot. Okay. Well, I think uh, yeah. When you're ready to put that in, you just let me know, and I'll, I'll be more than happy to help. You. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Right? <laughs> I'm sure. So. Um, if you're just tuning in and Facebook kind of popped up, it's been fluctuating a lot of people in and out. Um, let's see here. We've got Andy Nelson. What's up, Andy? We have to bring Andy on. I have to figure out a way to listen. It'd be nice to be able to bring people on camera, hear their question through a separate headset. Oh, we can't. No, we can't. No, we can't. Not with this phone. We can't. But for people like Andy who are way off on the other side of the country, we could bring him on camera. Yeah, as long well, as he that's the thing we can bring my camera, but we have no way of hearing them. Mm. Mm. We could, uh, well, you know his number. Yeah. Well, we're not gonna bring my camera now. He's probably not even on right now. No, no, but but no, we we're gonna have this set up to where we can bring on camera and you can ask questions on the show. Uh -huh. um, Nick's been working on that for three months now. Wow. <laughs> See how that works? Because nothing's changed. <laughs> it's still your fault. <laughs> 26 episodes. Bring him on camera. We are only on season two. I can't control Facebook. What we'll have to do is just use it through an Android or, or the headphone adapter for iPhone so we can actually hear it on the, that. That phone right there that they're looking at us, that one. If you mm -hmm. click on bring on a camera there, it's not. No, it's, it's if you not click it on here. Matter. No, if you click it on here, it's going to bring them on that camera. Right. So. Their face will show up on this and that, but there'll be a delay on this. I don't know. We're gonna have to figure this out. But anyways, shout out to Andy, uh, Brian Jettleson, Donna Peach Christian, Melissa Butler, Jerry Mutt. Hey, wait, that's my dad. Uh, Yasser, Bobby, Christy, Tr Trish Lito. Yeah, there you go. She might know. Yeah, Trish. Like, uh, you're gonna have to help us out here. We got all this fancy, expensive, yeah, ridiculous audio equipment. Three dummies that don't know how. To and three use dummies it. and a cell phone. So <laughs> let's figure this out. Three dummies. I'm sorry, one. Uh, ah, the rest of us. Suck it, man. <laughs> wow. 26 episodes, Nick. Wow. You can't wow. make it till January. Like I'm counting, man. <laughs> We're going to have a nice, welcoming, <coughs> amazing <coughs> ceremony <laughs> at 26 weeks. That kind of scares me. It should. It should. My grandfather was mm. one of the first people to uh, tune into this right now. Uh, he gave me something. I don't want to talk about it yet because there's apparently there's a well there's a note attached to this that said before you display it and talk about it, call grandpa, get the story. Mm -hmm. there, there's apparently a story with this, but it'll go great on our wall. And I think that's something that we should do is to the people that send something or things we add, we can talk about it real quick. Do you want to grab yeah. that? So Shine Tech USA um, has sent us this nice steel cut out of the M two hundred. And we'll be mounting that somewhere on the wall. I'm trying to figure out where. We'll figure it out. You know what works? Here. I don't know if I can reach that far. 
You're going to jam it in the <laughs> yeah. wood. I don't know how that'll look. Look at that. Hey. Check that out. There we go. The M200. I'm just going to sit up a little tall in here. No, actually, it works fine. Yeah, there we go. So they sent us the M200. We'll get that mounted up here on the wall once we do some redecorating. <laughs> but as people send stuff in, we'll get it hung up. We've got... Um, I added my badger. Yeah. You know, can't shoot badgers in Wisconsin. <clears throat> stay down there. But I uh, went down to Texas. Well, I, I told the story on the radio. That was probably... Did you? Yeah, the hog story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... We shot that at night off of a high rack, they call them. Or at least at this ranch, they call it. It's a, It was an older, like, Toyota hard body that had a big rack built up on top of it with a bunch of... I think they were like school bus benches. <laughs> and then there's a whole bunch of plugs where you plug your spotlights in. And you can shoot predators and stuff on, on the private ranch. And we would just ride around, and the guides that were with us would tell us, okay, hey, yeah, that is something we can shoot. You can do that? You want to move the vehicle there? I don't know if it has to be parked while you're shooting. I don't know. It was It's a high fence ranch that we were tagging along on a hunt. But uh, but I shot that badger down there in Texas. And is that a honey badger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure it is. Honey it's badger. actually it's, it's a, badger, it's a fairly care. small one. But because of being a state animal, I'm like, you know, I've got to get, I've got to get that pelt. I have yeah. to. So that was, that was my one takeaway from that trip was, was this badger okay. pelt. Yeah. So I like it. I like it. It looks good. If you're listening to the podcast, you know, check us out on Facebook at Back to the Lodge. You'll be able to see our back wall in the new studio here at IC Tech headquarters in Hunnian, Tennessee, which is home to us for the most part. Uh, Nick's a little further out of town. You're a little further out of town. I call you Hunnian. That was nice of you. I'm oh, sure somebody would appreciate that. Claim dollar. Nobody knows where that is. <laughs> I'll claim the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Nick, you live? Milan. Milan. I go through two different towns to get here. That's how much you love us. Yep. Uh, you know, although I might as well claim Huntington because 90% of my time is here. Well. So, yeah. I mean, I literally just go home to sleep and then... If I'm not asleep, I'm here. And you're how old? Uh, 26. And you're still going home to sleep. You're doing better than I did at 26. Amen. <laughs> wow. Not a bad thing. No, it's a good thing. I don't know why he's so upset about it. You're going to make me feel spoiled. No, no. No, I mean, <laughs> just smarter than we were at that time. I'm saying we were in the military at that oh, age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're going home. You're like, uh. That's not the reaction you're supposed to give. I'm getting really bad at this, I guess. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Do you need a hug? Mm, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll give you a hug. I, you know, I'm, I'm secure I'm, enough in my mask. I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. Yeah. Social distancing. <laughs> Easily still here. I'm sure he is. I want to talk about Doe Palooza this weekend. Well, it's only going to be one day, right? Half day for me. Oh, that's right. You had something to do Sunday. Yeah, I got friends giving Saturday. Oh, Saturday that's right. That's right. So I've got Saturday or I've got Sunday morning. He says he's watching with us. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's still here. It just yeah. happened. It just happened. <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to hit the button. You know what? We're just gonna wing it. I'm gonna hit the button and see what happens. Mine doesn't say very much. Actually, yeah, mine doesn't either. They must know. <laughs> He's been <laughs> like, we know better. Don't bring that stooge home. He's been in Facebook jail too many times. I wonder if that's why he's not allowed to be there. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Robert, thanks for joining us. So yeah, the, the new Facebook algorithm, I almost messed that up. The algorithm rule, you can't put like and share anymore. You're not even allowed to say it. So we're going to just opposite day. It's don't like and don't share our lives. Wink, wink. And that's the best way to, um, yeah, I don't know a better way to come up with that, do you? Nope. <laughs> Fresh out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it, this is this is a problem. And, and I know well, there's a lot of people jumping over to Parler right now and, and other platforms. But here's the reality of it. They're all still privately owned. So they can all do whatever they want to do. And I just had this discussion today with our with Andy, our attorney, um, because we we run campaign ads as Icy Tech, and I was, I, we watched it. And I'm like, man, why why are the sales 
dropping on the ad response. Like we weren't getting the interactions we were getting. We weren't getting, you know, even good, bad, or different. If you run something and 50,000 people look at it, you're still going to get Johnny on the spot to say, that's a piece of crap. You know, right, somebody right. negative. We didn't even get negative feedback. And I'm like, how in the hell did 40, 50,000 people or 20,000 on some of these see this post? But nothing, just nothing. And we, we ran some stupid steep sales yeah. for cyber, oh, yeah. cyber weeks for Black Friday. And it was quiet for a little bit. And I'm like, wow. And then I talked to other outdoor companies at the dinner banquet. And then I talked to a major brand. I won't say which company it was. I talked to a major brand in the outdoor sporting goods area. And then I talked to Justin, who has other clients. And it's all the same thing. Facebook has throttled back out a lot of companies that are, I don't want to say conservative, but conservative-based. And... They're pushing, and it, it was just came out in this testimony, they were pushing more of a progressive content to everyone. And I was talking to Andy, and you know, you've met Andy, haven't you? No. Okay. Andy is Tom Cruise looking, super cool, conservative uh, attorney, outdoorsy guy, veteran. Yeah. Um, and, and he said there's been four times, three or four times in the last couple of days that the sponsor ad on his Facebook that he sees every day now is The View. Trying to make him subscribe to the view. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, privately owned companies, they're privately owned. I get it. People say we gotta hold them accountable, but to another degree too, they're they're privately owned. I mean yeah. I, I, I agree that there should be fairness, <clears throat> just as like any industry, like the housing community and and hiring for jobs, like there should be fairness and equitable um, equality across the board. But again, it's like, well, if you pay for a service, you should get the service. So, look, end of the day, you can jump ship. You can go to any other social media platform you want. But let's not forget, it wasn't um, 15 years ago, everybody was jumping from MySpace to Facebook. Or 10 years ago, I don't know how long. It's been a while, probably 15 or more. <clears throat> but, um, you know, that was the mass exodus. Everybody left, my, left MySpace. Oh, there's so many viruses. There's so much bad stuff, like corruption and Russian spies and all this. Look, everybody migrated. And now everybody's like, man, where's Tom? We need him. And I, <laughs> I even seen somebody post a screenshot that they went and created a MySpace account. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, great. There's your three friends, and that's the entire internet. I don't know what to tell you. Well, it's like we got on our, it must have been about a year ago. Me and you tried to get into our old, yeah, we obviously don't know the login, but we can find them. MySpace deleted half my photos. Yeah. And mm. Yeah, there were some cool stuff. I did find some neat things that I had forgotten about. I'm pretty sure that I deleted my account at some point. I apparently didn't. I apparently just jumped and ran. I Because I, mine's still there. But Steve, I, I still haven't done Twitter or uh, TikTok. Like, I just... I won't do... I haven't done Twitter. I won't do Twitter. I, I'm, I'm not, not a fan. Did I ever tell you my Twitter story? No. I don't... Well, at least I don't think you know. So I'm a big sports guy. Mm -hmm. I've been for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I used to listen to ESPN radio on the way to work every morning. And at the time, it was Mike and Mike still uh, in the morning. Now it's Mike and Wingo or Hanford. Anyways, uh, there was three ways to enter for their, you know, they give away Super Bowl tickets or Final Four tickets or whatever. They give away tickets. There's also three ways to enter. You call the number, you text the number, and you tweet. So I was doing the two because I didn't have a tweeter. And <laughs> tweeter. And I got, I got home one day and I was thinking, I was like, you know, Matt, you're only getting, you know, 66%, 67% of a chance of getting this. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just do a Twitter just to enter these ESPN things? So yeah. I go ahead and I start my, my Twitter. And, and every morning, every morning I would call and I would text and I'd get those two entries and then I would tweet. A month went by and I think it was my sister said, hey, Matt, you, you got Twitter yet? No, I said no. Well, sort of, but I only use it for ESPN to get entered. Blah blah blah. I mean, just to warn your mom's watching now. That's fine. Okay. There's nothing wrong. Uh, come to find out, I'm pretty sure it was my sister that was looking. She goes, "You realize you haven't sent a single one of these tweets, right?" Well, they were all just like saved as drafts. Like I'd never. Oh. Uh, so at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm too dumb to work a tweeter, and I deleted it. They're gonna merge them. Just have twit face. Yeah, so that was it. That was my like one month on Twitter. 
uh, only doing the ESPN stuff, and obviously didn't even do it right. So now, now I'm like against it. I'm not smart enough to figure it out. But when we all jumped over to Facebook, I remember being like confused on how it works. Mm -hmm. Where I could still work my MySpace, I could put music to it. Oh, I could customize. Yeah, which is you were basically learning how to code. Yeah, or copy and paste. <laughs> Either way, regardless, <laughs> we were doing that stuff, and then I couldn't figure out Facebook, which is super simple. Mm -hmm. But I remember being very confusing, and I'm sure Twitter's the same way. There's a lot of really dumb people on it that have figured it out. <laughs> so, uh, hi, Mom. <laughs> Man, we gotta get your mom on this show. I cannot believe we didn't have her on. She wasn't here till She Wednesday. just said that she, or she said she wanted my dad to be on it first. This is gonna be so good. I cannot, cannot wait. So, Mrs. Dretzka, when you come back to Tennessee, with, and your dad's gonna go, Dave. So, you and Dave come. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I cook that night, and we'll have a spread up here because I'm, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have anything bad to say about me. I've always been a great kid. Of course, you know what we haven't done. You and I have been like telling these embarrassing stories when we did the photo telethon. <laughs> And uh, I even I even said to the right down I was going to tell the most embarrassing story of my life, and it involved fecal matter. Um, but I was picking on you and you know your folks coming. But you know what we haven't done? We haven't reached out to any of Nick's family yet. No. <laughs> Thank you, John Mads. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't really know if you're going to get much. Are you tired today? I am tired today. You're awfully quiet. You're more quiet than the normal quiet. Yeah, I'm just, it's, it's one of those days, you know, I'm just tired. And, you know, it's only like 24 degrees in this room. It's much warmer, trust me. I'll, I'll go, I'll take you for a ride in the Jeep. You have a Jeep? Oh, you just told this whole story here on this 20 minutes ago. Are you okay? The Jeep? He's driving Alan's Jeep. Okay. <laughs> I remember that. The whole drive home, get home at 4.30 in the morning, it's freezing cold, the windshield's frosted up. For some reason, I missed the Jeep. <laughs> Nick, I'm glad you're here with us. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> Welcome back to the lodge. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, dude. <laughs> I'm hey, I told you I was tired. I'm worried about you. I told you I was tired. We're still gonna. This doesn't change the course of action. We are still gonna find. You know what? Tanea probably knows some stuff. I'm sure she, she does. probably doesn't. <clears throat> Tanea. Yeah. She and probably. That's why you get voiceover gig. Yeah. <laughs> How many have you done? Hmm. I'd probably say. About four or five so far. Look at you. Look at you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's not too difficult, right? You hit record, but, read it, and then it not record. <laughs> you, look, I, come on. It, it's a little more than that. He's got to be. You got to be at least what compressing the file and and, and cleaning up the audio and all that. Well, there's more that just goes into audio engineering. It. I mean, come on. You got to have the skill for it. You know, the skill for voiceovers. Yeah, we know that. To perform the voiceover. Absolutely. I mean, I mean any old average Joe can just clean up some audio. It rhymed, by the way. Yeah, it did. There was... <laughs> Give me a little taste of a voiceover. It doesn't have to be an actual one. Just, just like it, your voiceover. Action movie. In a world. Ooh. <laughs> well, keep going. Oh, God. I, uh... Okay, what... What do we want the plot of the world to be? Sure. Whatever. Hey, sure. Figure it out. I don't know. Do we have a pen and paper? I mean, not readily available. Hmm. Yes, we, well, we have paper. I don't know about a pen. Mm, I was going to write out some words and have you read them back in cue cards, so that way you can't see what's on the next cue card. <laughs> I can find something. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so we're we're gonna we're gonna give you the cue card test. And and speaking of um, diverting from the show theory here, you got any plans to get outdoors this fall? Uh, 
me and my stepdad talked last night, and we were talking about going hunting uh, Sunday. There you go. Opening weekend for rifle season. You're just a bit late, but yeah, Sunday works. Well, you know, I said opening weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. We still got splinters in this thing. I see that. Yeah, I just grabbed one. Ooh. It'll be alright. Right. Yeah, it's April. Game on. Don't Actually, look, Nick. Don't look. I'll let you guys take it for a minute. I'm going to write out some lines for Nick. Okay. Yeah. Just for. <laughs> Will Easley just said, for. Will Easley said, Nick Condor, you have the perfect face for voiceovers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just for my sake. Please, for the love of God, keep it clean. Please. Please. Yeah. Please. There'll be no bad words. Oh. <laughs> no bad words. Uh, don't make it too bad. You guys take it from there. I got this. Are you hunting this weekend, Nick? You got stuff going on? Uh, I'm wanting to go hunting Sunday with my stepdad. We talked about it yesterday. Speaking of yesterday, my goodness. You'll never guess what I had to do. So I get a call from my mom a little late and, uh, Long story short, uh, one of my granddad's uh, mules had been laying on the ground for, you know, 24 hours. And if you know anything about, you know, horses, mules, anything like that, like, that's not good. Um, they can only lay down for a certain amount of time before, you know, blood flow gets cut off and stuff like that. Like, their bodies aren't made for that. And uh, so, he had been down for that long. and course probably by that time uh, muscles are just completely dead asleep so there's no getting him up well you know we had to put him down and uh, that's what I had to do last night and that may be why I'm tired today <laughs> <laughs> did you have to haul it off no uh, my stepdad uh, buried him today oh, okay so shovel uh, no, track off. Thank God. <laughs> big shovel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, big motorized shovel. Yeah. Well, I know we're going to hunt a little bit Sunday. We're going to try to take advantage of that three doe a day mm -hmm. this weekend. Look, this property is so overrun with deer. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, they're talking about a you know, ton of crop damage. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the crop yield this year was just terrible with... With, with how, how what these deer have done so i believe it uh, i think at one point they talked about on the entire property i'm not gonna say how big the property is it's pretty big but they mm -hmm. want to take out 100 deer this year mm -hmm. um so we're going to take advantage of that three dollar day and then yeah. you know, hunters for the hungry and you know if there's anybody around that here locally that is looking for some venison please let us know yeah. um but uh well know, let's not commit to that until we build a freezer yeah because i don't think that's gonna be hard well, it just depends on <laughs> how much time. Well, look, here's the thing: you get out there, and we all get one. Then you still have hours and hours and hours of processing and pulling up. Yeah, but that's the, that's the thing. When it, when it comes to if you're donating a deer, you're not processing them. You're just throwing these in the side by side, throwing them back in the truck, and taking off. Okay, but it depends on where you're donating because the ticket availability now is being run, as far as I understand, through the county, because the county sheriff was donating the meat, and you had to go there. What to ticket? Pick it up. What ticket? This was two days ago. Carroll County Sheriff's Office, if you they were distributing the meat, so you had to get a ticket to have the deer dropped off, process, and then they were going to pick it up. You had to bring a ticket from the front desk when the deer was hungry. You just take it there. Well, I, understood, I understood there was a limit to how many of those they were taking. Well, maybe because we were discussing that this week. We'll look into it more, but I would just say don't. Depending on where they get it, because I know the County Sheriff's Office was distributing it this week. No. Are you writing a dead gun book? You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hurry up because we're almost up against the time. There's no time. <laughs> easily, easily just sitting out there just listening to us talking about how dumb we are. I got this. This better be good. Mm. We need to get the safe open lock. Can we talk about that? We gotta get the disc. No, we don't want to talk about that. Why? Why? Have you lost your safe key with both of our rifles in it? <laughs> I hate you. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Yeah. True story. True story. Oh my god. We spent, I don't know, two hours yesterday. Oh, we, got, oh, we got through one. We're drilling them out. And we got through one yesterday. Mm. And thirty dollars worth of drill bits. <laughs> and and we've got the second one started. But that's about it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Local hardware store is out of cutting oil. So we don't have that. Oh. Uh, got some here. Did you find it? I don't know if I know it's here. Okay. I know I have some at home too. I just I, I looked for it this morning and I couldn't find it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we can get that drilled out so I can pop a few holes, you know, target, it, make sure that it's that's right. It should still be dialed in. I don't know why it wouldn't, unless Patrick's been throwing it around the house or something like that. You been throwing the rifle around? I've had the before you locked it up and locked the key. No. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Nick. I made a nice one. We're good. I know, yeah. wasn't it? I love body lines, but you, gotta, you do have to be kind of close to the microphone. Um, so you're gonna have to read these in order. Here's the rule, Nick. There's one rule. Since you're the voiceover pro, you have to read in parentheses. It's gonna start with your action movie voice. Then it'll tell you the voice in parentheses. Mm-hmm. Read what it says. But you're not allowed to peek at the next page until you finish the page. You're I can't on. read the script before I read the script. Absolutely not. And pretend you're getting paid. So. As serious as you can. Okay, well, number one, even if I am getting paid, I mean, there's multiple takes. Nope, not this time. I'll buy you a beer. You have to do a little more than that. This is this is called impromptu. So just oh pretend that's Drew Carey and you're Colin Murphy. All right. <laughs> Welcome <clears throat> back to the lodge, Nick. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna make sure you're fit for this show. You ready? I'm ready. Hold on, I'm ready. I know what it says. Oh, I forgot to put the, the last line on the last page. Ooh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I forgot to put the person's name. I wonder how many keys I was I just in. I didn't see it. No. All right. All right, you got the good news is you only have like less than a dozen people, maybe half a dozen people on the Facebook live. So that's all right. I'm only shaking. Yeah, you are. Because it's like 24 <laughs> degrees in this room. Oh my god, you have a sweatshirt on. <laughs> hey, I'm lean. <laughs> See my belly. Uh, all right, you ready? <clears throat> oh, I'm tired, so nervous. <laughs> in a world where voices can change. <laughs> no, no, no. My voice is the best. No, no, no. My voice is the best. <laughs> No, 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 no. Mm-mm. My voice is the best. <laughs> I love. <laughs> Long walks on the beach and strawberry daiquiris. Yeah, <laughs> Let's see, you had Kermit the Frog, Sling Blade, Luke Bryan, and Consuela all in one. <laughs> well, Let us know which voice was yours, was your favorite. I mean, Consuela's <laughs> pretty good, Kermit was pretty good. Sling Blade, that's, that's a hard one if you don't get it, you know. Mm-hmm. I reckon. Mm-hmm. There you Just go. You would. Nah, I like mustard on my biscuits. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> Who the hell puts mustard on biscuits? <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's not like some dude said. <laughs> I agree. Oh, dear. I like mustard on my biscuits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to know what you do with biscuits. 
<laughs> Anyways. Nobody does. All right, our time's expired for the week, and uh, we're working on some new content that's going to be coming out with new guests as we, most of our guests are actually out in the field hunting, as rightfully so. Uh, but we'll have some new guests coming on. Uh, we look forward to bringing... <laughs> What? <laughs> the comments on Facebook. I'm losing. I put it says I put must well easily. I put mustard on briskets. I am not surprised in the least bit. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, until next week, ask yourself, what are you grateful for? Live from Icy Tech Studios here in Huntington, Tennessee. I'm Patrick. I'm still Matt. I'm Nick. And we are back to the lodge. We'll see you next week, guys. Mm -hmm. Is that Bo? Mm -hmm. Is that Bo? No, it's me. Oh. It's not like Bo for a second. Don't shut it off. I know. <laughs> hey, where'd all my beer go that was in the fridge? Um, Easley and Tommy? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah.